Ryan Clark there talking about how the 49ers are the only team they can beat the Cowboys. We've already seen like two other teams beat the three. Like three other teams already beat the Cowboys this year. We've seen it happen. Anyway, uh, he's saying Dak Prescott is currently his MVP. Uh, nobody, and, and of course, confidence is what it's all about. He's playing with a confidence, Tom, that we have not seen uh, in Dak Prescott before. Brock Purdy's leading the league in damn near every category, passing category, except for passing touchdowns. Brock's got 20, uh, excuse me, Dak has 28. Brock is second. In, uh, in MVP odds, he's got 25 passing touchdowns. He's got a slight edge in yards, 35-53 to Dak, who's at 35-05. You think Purdy's performance head-to-head with Dak or Jalen, or even possibly Lamar, because he will have played all three of them by the time the, the MVP votes are cast, right? He plays Lamar on Christmas. Is that going to play a factor? Does any of that, you think, play in? Well, I think what what plays in more than anything is the perception that he has more talent around him than anybody else. Uh, and, and you could make a case, maybe not a strong case at this point, but still make a case that Christian McCaffrey could be the MVP. Agreed. I mean, Christian McCaffrey, as good as Purdy has been, he is kind of the, I will say, the hub of the offense just because he's so dynamic from a running back position that everybody it, it benefits from him just being out there. It's like I always say with Steph and Clay, like you don't even have to score hardly. Like you're you're out there, you make it you're, everybody's job easier. McCaffrey makes everybody's job easier just based on what he can do. That's not gonna happen. Uh I could make a I could make a I could make a decently compelling case uh that Hill could be the MVP based on what he means to that offense. I'm like with if you the there. Dolphins go on and lead the AFC, like if they get the number one seed, I mean Hill is the guy down there. Now problem with wide receivers getting it is somebody's always thinking well the, somebody has to get it to them right that's well, that is true there's no doubt but the strain he puts on the defense is unbelievable like he like what McCaffrey does for the receivers and everybody else I think Hill does for the running game too just because you, you have to be concerned with that dude on every single play and he, he still kills him I mean, he's still on pace to break Calvin Johnson's uh, receiving record yep. and still on pace to go over 2,000 yards. Uh, it's insane what he is doing. So I don't know. I mean, I think there's some good, you know, some good candidates this year. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, look, Brock Purdy doesn't play against Dak Prescott, uh, nor vice versa. So it's hard to say what head-to-head matchups really mean. Uh, but look what he did against them. I mean, the Cowboys are a really good defense. Shredded them. I mean, again, we remember we talked to Shanahan at ha- or the, the, after that game on Thursday like we always do, and he said he thought they should have been up more, like scored 35 in the first half. They were dominant. I mean, they kicked the crap out of that team in the first half. And then what he did in Philly it was ultra impressive. So, yeah, I mean, he should be there. He absolutely should be there. Like, I don't know who's going to win it. If he doesn't, it'll you know some of it will be because he just has so many weapons, and I think some people will hold that against him, although they shouldn't. Uh, but he's gonna be right there. You keep winning, you're gonna be right there. Yeah, he'll be there. Uh, do you think? Uh, well, let me ask you this thing because you were just talking about McCaffrey. Who do you think's the MVP yep. of the Niners? Is it McCaffrey? For you? Oof, man, Cause that's I, so. Cause tough. I've got a, I've got a, you know, I think I would have said it was McCaffrey too for some time in the last few weeks. I'd say it's Debo. Uh, but then, but then again, it's about getting the ball to him. It, yeah. it it may very well be Brock Purdy. It's not just about throwing to a spot. I mean, again, we can talk about all the weapons around him. Jimmy Garoppolo had a lot of really good weapons. I made the case yesterday in the post game show. People go, yeah, but not McCaffrey. Where he most ran for four touchdowns and two hundred plus in an NFC Championship game, where Jimmy threw the ball eight damn times because there was. You can say, well, it wasn't about. Remember all the arguments? It's confidence. Yep. It's yeah. no, it was just what they allowed for. You're telling. I don't think there will ever be a game. That Brock Purdy throws the ball eight times, no matter how well McCaffrey's running. I just I can't imagine that's the case. Yeah, no, that was a case of we're running the ball really well, so why throw it? And we have this guy who might throw a ball right to a linebacker. Yeah, we're gonna keep running it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things right, are going right. well. Things are going well for us. We're doing okay over here. We're good. Uh, yeah, but I think what you said. A lot of people will think about, yeah, but what about McCaffrey? Whoa, what about Debo? What about Debo? Oh, man, Ayuk's been incredible. They, they, I think that will work against him. Here's a great thing, because when you're that young, it doesn't matter to him. 
I mean, all he's got to do is keep winning. And he's going to – it just – he's probably still loving the fact that he's a starting quarterback for a Super Bowl – uh, caliber team, uh, yeah. Caliber team, and 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 he's just. I mean, I I don't know if he's trying to do it, trying not to do it. He's just shutting people up weekly. Like and people have to be more and more. People have to be like, okay, I get it. Okay, I was late to the party. I get it. Like, if, there's a lot of people that are late to this party, but a lot of them are showing up now. It might be overflow. You may you may need to go out to the backyard now. Because there are a lot of people that were here early, and then a lot of people, when they watched him this year, started to say, hmm, okay, got it. And then even myself, I didn't even say anything till Cincinnati, although, again, that was more of a bit. Uh, you watch him. <laughs> you just watch him. Yeah. You're like, what is there not, like, what take, don't you take, see? take out of your mind where he got drafted. That's what you have to do. You have to take that out of your mind. Because if I could put in your mind, put a little chip in your mind, he was the 10th overall pick like three years ago, you'd think, oh, this guy's like going to be a Hall of Famer. He's incredible. Yep. Like, it's awesome. But again, it's that waiting for the bubble to burst. It's natural. It just is. When somebody gets drafted that low, you're like, well, how come nobody saw it? Why didn't anybody think this guy was got to be something there? That, And then, oh, okay, that's it. It, it, it is natural, to, but it hasn't popped up. And if it hasn't popped up yet, I mean, come on. What's going to pop up now? Are you kidding me? Like, this guy is just hes a dominant quarterback right now. I don't care what you say. You can say whatever you want. You can talk about the offense, Shanahan, the weapons. Doesn't matter. This guy's putting balls on the money. The throw to Kittle, the throw to Debo. I mean, just whap right in the hands. Whap right in the hands. In stride. Keep running. Don't worry about it. You don't got to reach up. You don't got to reach back. You don't got to reach down. Just put your hands up and keep running. Boom. And it, it, it just, no, and then the athleticism, and we I feel like we talk about it every single week, and we're kind of preaching to the choir here in the Bay because I think everybody's watching them. They kind of they kind of know. It's just funny to me, and maybe it shouldn't, maybe it shouldn't be that surprising because other parts of the country don't watch the Niners like we do because they're the hometown team, so that's the team you watch. Uh, and they, you know, national shows got to watch all the games, and they don't. But they don't even watch really the same depth. Watch. Right, they're not paying attention. To no, the same exactly. Level. Right, exactly. But if you did, you just I'm. It, there is no way, no way, if you watched every Niner game since he played the Dolphin game last year and watched him play, you just couldn't have any other. Uh. Uh. uh, uh comment other than the guy is incredible that's a, that's the only thing you could come up with you can't unless, unless you just wanted to be different like if you wanted to go total rogue contrarian yeah. then maybe you could i mean but you can't how do you sell it the guy it, it just i don't know I, I we talk about it every single week and again we're preaching to the choir here but this guy's a badass i mean he's they have a badass at quarterback and they got a badass everywhere else too so yeah i mean could that hurt him Sure. I don't think he cares. I think he wants to win a damn Super Bowl along with the rest of his team. I think so, so too. And they're as primed to win the Super Bowl as they have been in a in a long, long time. Again, they you, you start checking off boxes for this team. There's not a lot of boxes you can't check anymore. There just is not a lot of boxes you can't Super check Bowl's anymore. Super Bowl's really hit. I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about. Brock Purdy hasn't won an NFC championship and he hasn't won a Super Bowl. That's about it for him and for Kyle and this team. I mean, that's... That's the only thing left. And then once they get that, I, I imagine that hunger does not go away. Then it's about stacking on mm -hmm. top of that. So uh, this team is as good as anybody. And, again, they're an absolute machine right now. Let me ask you this then. How closely did you watch yes. the game last night, Cowboys and Eagles? Pretty. I mean, you watched I watched the whole game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you see any more of yeah. what, we, what Nick Bosa talked about? Or did you see, because, again, about the personnel versus the playbook or the getting a, a deficiency that they've exposed the 49ers defense for the the Cowboys to use against the Eagles a blueprint on how to stop the Eagles did you see any of that or was it it was pretty dominant I thought of, of how they got to Jalen Hurts but it was a little different yeah no it, I, I didn't really see much of that I mean they they ran a couple plays they didn't run against the Niners uh straight quarterback runs I thought they got too far upfield a couple times let them scramble up the middle and then throw it but really last time the pocket the, better right yeah it was about the turnovers right I mean your three best players all turned it over yeah, Hertz turned it over, Smith turned it over, and Brown turned it over. And that was the story of the game. Uh, I don't know if they had a one anyway. Dallas was just better. 
Uh, they, they were able to, to to move the ball, able to run the ball when they needed to. They just looked faster than the Eagles. So I don't know that it made a huge difference. I mean, they, they didn't score an offensive touchdown. The only time they scored is when Dak got, got just got real loose with the ball, and Fletcher Cox knocked it out, and, and Carter ran it back for a touchdown. So clearly the Cowboys were better, quite a bit better. But I mean, this is the NFL when two teams are semi evenly matched, and you turn the ball over three times like they did, it's, you're, it's, well, it's over. The team that gets it is going to win, right? Yeah, it's over. So, but I don't know if I look at. Because, yes, that is a defensive line and a front seven that can maybe match up with the 49ers and, 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 and how they can be dominant. Uh, you got Parsons and Lawrence on each side. They're really, really good. Uh, their linebackers don't match up with the Niners, but I don't think anybody's do. So, But it was different. It was a little bit different. Like I didn't think they were quite as dominant. The, 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 like, the Eagles just weren't going to score after the first quarter against the 49ers. I thought the Cowboys or the, the – Philly could score if they could have just held on to the ball. Like, they moved it a little bit. They just couldn't hold on to the damn ball. But And then I guess the Smith one was kind of late anyway, so maybe that one doesn't even matter. It was like game was over yeah. over at that point. So, But, yeah, that was – The uh, Hurts one hurt. I mean, that was early. That, that was, was a big one. I get that, yeah, yes. that, was, that, was, that was brutal for them to, to, uh, yep. to try to move the ball after going down early on the touchdown and then, uh, yep. and then not being able to come back because of the turnovers. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if there's a book, but the Eagles are reeling right now, and the Cowboys have a tough schedule, but the Eagles can correct and still win the division. Niners control their own fate. You know who's going to be hyped about this? Brent Jones, who was in Cowboy country yesterday. We'll talk yes, to him about what it was like to root for the Cowboys down in Texas for Brent Jones last night over the Eagles. Niners are the hottest team in football, or one of the hottest teams in football. Them and the Dallas Cowboys. Niners have the number one seed. We will talk. To number 84, the former 49er tight end Brent Jones. Coming up My next, guys. only here on the sports.